Are you ready? What's my name? What's my, what's my name? What's, say Kareem Ali. Say Kareem Ali. Say Kareem Ali. You're listening to Are you serious? The Hip Hop Debate Show. Okay, so hear me out. The official podcast of Kareem Ali. In about two seconds, Kareem Ali will begin to speak. Let me start this. Okay, Kareem Ali TV. Uh, this is the Are You Serious podcast. I see that I'm still out of sorts, but fuck it. I just don't talk that much. Um, so we got uh, Slayster Hughes, a.k.a. Lyrical Leviathan, on the show today. My guy, Pittsburgh, PA. Very serious. Oh, wait. That's at the end. Yeah, that's at the end, nigga. You just see yeah, this guy. <laughs> we got my man, Jammer One. Oh, yeah. Uh, who become uh, a really incredible producer over the years. I love this guy's music. I got a beat that I'm about to record to that I haven't paid for. I need to... <laughs> I took <laughs> this nigga beat and shit out of I mean, here. I beat. I just sent him a cash app or nothing. I mean, I just... Uh, man, I'm not trying to beat you for your beat. <laughs> like, this is my beat, punk. <laughs> we got my man Ty Hill. Says he's a former MC, but he's always an MC to me. Um... The, the the leader of the the host of the Cards Face Up podcast, which is make sure you dope. subscribe. Make he's sure got, you subscribe. He's got a dope ass beard too. Speaking of beards, I got the Yoji and Pans out for the Omega Beard Grooming Kit, and it, it's so dope because it comes with this dope ass comb. That's a high level comb. That's just Ooh. one step below the nineteen seventy six fist pick that all our fathers used to uh, <laughs> used to rock, and that big straw chair that looked like a fucking throne. Yeah, the mm-hmm. guy this pit, you know, all the bl- all, all black women back there probably smell like blue hair grease and shit. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. So we got a good one today. We're gonna irritate some people. I'm sure of it. Who's the greatest hip hop group of all time? Is it Wu Tang Clan from Shaolin, as you have with your shirt, Jammer One, or is it a tribe called Quest? I don't know. Uh, Jam, I'll let you lead this one off because you have the Wu Tang shirt. What would you say? Would you say Tribe Called Quest has a chance of competing against Wu Tang Clan? Would you say they could be as good of a group, or is it is it official? Is it is it easy to say? Is it just the world accepted that Wu Tang is the is the is the greatest ever? For me, it's pretty easy, and you know I have to I gotta go with Tribe. I mean, Wu Tang is great. The Wu Tang is great. You know. I love the Wu-Tang, but, um, like, Tribe Called Quest, they created somewhat of a subculture or subdivision in hip-hop. Not, and not just them alone, the whole Native Tongue collective. Native tongue, right. You know what I mean? They created a whole subgenre of the style that a lot of people use still to this day. Like, we was just talking about Luke Bay Fiasco versus Royce the Five Nine. And I look at Lupe Fiasco as a direct descendant of acts like Tribe Called Quest. But you never got into Lupe Fiasco, so how's your argument even valid? You don't like I checked check Lupe out, and I'm going to listen to some of his albums after that last <laughs> part. But yeah, I, I know, I know. Um, because they, they birthed this, this new style of speaking. They made things more, more cerebral. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. More poetic. So... That's that style is just you know you can't mess with. I can't. It's crazy because I can't give. I can't really mention Tribe Called Quest without mention, mentioning De La Soul, because that they're collective. You know what I mean? While Tribe had like this <coughs> this vibe, De La just had the style, and it was like oh, okay, well I don't have to be explicit when I rap. I could write. I could rap poetry. You know. I can I can ex- I can be expressive. I can say what's on my mind. I don't have to front, you know, to be the coolest kid in the class. I can still be kind of a geek That's and a still be point. dope as a rapper. You know what I mean? They didn't have to submit to street culture. They just they were honestly expressing themselves. That's what hip hop is supposed to be about: uh, creativity right. and skill level and artistry. So, but is tribe by itself better than, better than Wu Tang? Or are you trying to bring in the collective as your argument? Do they need the whole native I'm, tongues? I'm not, to- not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm I'm just just like via that. Tribe Called Quest is my favorite group. Okay. And 
um, the, the way those beats hit, you know what I mean? The way them beats hit and the way they ride them tracks, when them joints come on in the club, yo, <laughs> you can't mess, you can't mess with Tribe, yo. Plus that live show, that live performance, oh my God, rock and roll, baby. Tyrell, what would you say Ty about this? Would you, would you lean towards uh, the Wu Tang Clan from Shaolin, Allen, or are you gonna go with the Mighty Tribe Called Quest? I was, I wonder what fucking club he had to be playing Tribe Called Quest. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get out of Baltimore, baby. You gotta get out of Baltimore. They be playing Tribe in the clubs. When you go to New York, you go to Atlanta, really? LA. They play Tribe in the clubs. Yes. That is yes. dope as shit. I'm going to yes. be honest, right? Because at the, at the end of the day, you got to break it down like, you know, neither one are my favorite groups. Mm. With the comparison of the two, I have to go with Tribe just because Tribe inspired a generation. Like you know, um, we, we, we have so much from that. You know, he spoke of De La Soul, but you also have the Bust of Rhymes. You also have, they, they, they they inspired the generation and they created a thing of music where you didn't have to be gangster, you know. And it was during a gangster time, mm, you know. Right. And they 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 allowed people to be their self. You feel me? Uh, you got shit like "Lost My Wild" and El Segundo and shit like that. Like, you know, songs that um was more fun, and you were able to actually like these niggas was basically shooting videos like the Spike Lee videos at the time. You feel me? Like mm. they was doing some weird ass stuff on the video, on videography, especially back then, which made it even more dope because technology wasn't what it was. But to not choose them right now would be to say, uh, like fucking uh, Raphael Sadiq didn't run, like didn't inspire so much R and B. Like you know, like they they created a lot of sub genres and put a lot of people in different places. So I'm gonna have to go with the tribe as well. Okay, well, Lyrical Leviathan. I know you have a lot to say about this as you comb and stroke your beard there. <laughs> Motherfuckingly. <laughs> Motherfuckingly. <laughs> you need to comb your shit on the top, too, my nigga. That's just like that. Looks like a Quest Love perm. You gotta <laughs> comb it. If you need to comb I feel like, you know, if you need to comb it, I have one here. Also, with some, you know. That ball. that's too hilarious to that's too hilarious to, for me to even keep my train of thought together. <laughs> to 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 the esteemed Jamma one and to the ill tie hill, I must <laughs> definitively say, are you serious? <laughs> okay, I think that this particular comparison, I think for me, I think that what we're doing is we're actually actually talking about the number one and number two greatest hip-hop groups of all time. I think more than any other comparison or category when you say the best of the best in hip-hop, I think this is the one that is the most definitively this is one, this is two. Um, I think Dayla makes a super strong case for potentially third, but there's a whole lot of other groups that could be in that conversation as well. But I think you're saying what's number one and what's number two? It's definitively these two slots have two groups locked in them more than any other category. And I think that it's number one Wu-Tang motherfucking clan and number two, <laughs> A Tribe Called Quest. Um, Why? I think, that a, I think that A Tribe Called Quest is the best fucking hip-hop group you can possibly get when you're being fair and you just have a group. <laughs> like, it's like two or three niggas and they make music together making beats and rhymes. Like a group where Wu-Tang kind of cheats where it's like we are an army. There's a group. <laughs> it's like it's <laughs> nine niggas. Like, so it's a head to head comparison is not fair in that way. But I also think Wu Tang is number one for all of the reasons that you could argue that Tribe is number two. Like, you talk about creating a whole movement and a whole nother branch off. Like, Wu Tang created a whole nother approach to just being a group, to how they created music, to how they approach. Even the business side was like, okay, this is give us a deal as a group, and then we can do other deals with any other labels or conglomerates we want within the group. And so they 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 revolutionized the business aspect as well. At one point between before all of the members fucked it up, like their their stock was like was approaching like 
well beyond the millions towards the billions in worth when they had the, the clothing line and, and, and their music and everything like under Wu-Tang Productions, like they were about to be a billion dollar conglomerate until the, all of the group members fucked it up and was like, I'm gonna go do this by myself. I'm gonna do this. And then RZA just being true to his brother was like, yeah, hey, I'm not gonna hold y'all like slaves. You know, messing up the money for everybody, but sure. So even in that way, they changed the way that things could be done. And then when you talk about bringing intellectualism to hip hop, like, yeah, Tribe did that in their black hippie way. It was super incredible. But Wu-Tang, they, they shifted so many people's consciousness in that like, it was mad niggas uh, incredibly like, just like, well, I guess this is what it is. Living in the hood, we're gonna sell crack and we're gonna shoot niggas up. And like Wu-Tang was like, oh, you can be you can be intellectually wise. You can be deeply spiritual and still represent where you come from to still have that edge and be intelligent. Like they had me rapping words as a kid that I didn't even know the meaning of yet because it was Wu-Tang style. It was like, you can yeah. say conglomeration and, and, and rhyme it with whatever you want. You could be a nerd, but you can also be cool. And like, then the way they got the spirituality into it, they did for they did for the nation of gods and earth ideology through hip hop what Rakim did in the eighties, they brought it to another level in the nineties where like they had right. people calling each other gods. And so like, that was a whole psychological and mental paradigm shift that they brought to the world through their music. Like Wu-Tang is like a religion to niggas. Like you go to Japan, they know the words to all the songs and they don't even speak the same language. Like, like I feel like so their global impact, I feel like, is like a dinosauric size footprint in that way. So I think we can't undersell the way that Wu Tang has done some of those same things that y'all stated the tribe did, arguably on a larger scale, even. Um, and then when you're talking about, you know, just MCing and making music and the skills, like the way RZA revolutionized the hip hop sound by doing something different with the samples than and everyone before him was doing it in the way that they brought the lyricality and the skill level to it, like in a different manner, like the level of MC, it was higher than a lot of their contemporaries at the time. Um, yeah, I gotta go with Wu-Tang. Like if they're cheating because it's too many of them niggas for you to like, I'd be like, like you could bring the whole Native Tongues crew to go against Wu-Tang and Wu-Tang is probably still gonna win the battle on the mic <laughs> because it's just, 80 of them niggas but in terms of like creating an entire movement an entire cultural shift um almost religifying like what they brought to hip-hop this nigga said religion you know what i <laughs> is for the children like you said religifying my job is for the intellectual nerd hippie niggas who is for the children and the children of the future therefore the answer has to be Wu -Tang. Did you just now mix fucking Wu Tang with Whitney? No, old dirty bastard. You know, Wu Tang's for the children. And then you said the children are the future. <laughs> but then, that's true. I did, yeah. I did, I did do that. Wu Tang and Whitney. Yeah, you, I don't know. you know what? She you, know what rock always, you know what I always thought you about Wu Tang? You, they always thought of Wu Tang as like the hood nigga who was mad ignorant, but he went to jail. Read some book, <laughs> came yeah, out. Right. Now he's trying to school everybody on the streets. That's why. That's what I always thought of Wu Tang. But I would I, never actually, debate. that's just Capadonna all by himself. But see, what, what I was saying about we didn't even know Capadonna was Wu Tang, really, because he was he, in jail. Though, for most yeah, time. like he disappeared after <laughs> what uh, ice just cream. Capadonna came back and was like, "School everybody," because it was in jail. Right. You feel <laughs> me? I, I had an argument the other day with someone, and they was like, "Um, we was doing Bone Thugs and Wu Tang," and they was like, "Um." Yeah, you know, because Red Man, I would like to see Red Man connect with um, somebody from Bone Thugs, right? And I was like, Red Man ain't in Wu Tang. Uh huh. They like he's he just is Method in Man's friend. They're like, like no, they sent, me a, they sent me an interview, and he's a fucking honorary member. He's an honorary member of Wu Tang. He's just fucking keep adding people in the already. I mean, on group. the last Wu Tang <laughs> album, he was technically in the group because he was on yeah. more. He was in more songs than RZA was. <laughs> I didn't know. See, I didn't know that shit, so I was confused. Ooh. I look stupid to everybody, but what I'm going to yeah. say is this with the Wu-Tang, you feel me? I agree with the whole um, religion into hip-hop of them doing, of them being a part of that, but what you also have to keep in mind is we were in a 5 percent world at that time. 
I mean, everybody on your blocks, even before Wu Tang was peace God, what's the what's the knowledge? What's the day's mathematics? Everybody was already kind of doing that. Not saying yeah, that they yeah, jumped yeah. on a bandwagon, they just happened to be a part of the hood, and the hood was right, doing some right. five percent of stuff at that time. So it made they, the information they, rhyme. Yeah, like, I will oh, say that they put it up words? to a they put it up to an information rhyme. What I will give them credibility me credit on one hundred percent is connecting the Chinese flicks to hip hop because I didn't know shit about none of those type of movies. I still don't know shit about them, but they did For connect. Real? Shaolin, uh, yeah, I can't watch it, but um, oh man, the whole Shaolin and stuff like that, like we didn't know that stuff through the hood, and they did. I yeah. remember coming through the block, and niggas was watching that, and it was bugging me out because niggas didn't know shit about like I didn't even know half of my niggas could read, and they sitting there reading subtitles, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow, that's just wonderful. And in, in New York, <laughs> that was another staple at the time, though, you know, in the eighties. Oh, stuff. for like, real, people want to go watch yeah, those movies yeah. at the um, theaters. Kung Fu, Fu yeah. flicks. Hip hop yeah. actually got its swag from Kung Fu flicks. Yeah, so they I mean they made that rhyme as well. <laughs> but if we yeah. if, if if we giving them that though, then we also got to keep in mind. I mean, y'all went over, you went over to RZA doing what RZA did for the culture. But let's not forget, Q-Tip Violator. That was a big fucking time. Yeah, yeah. Violator. Vi yeah, the after after the Wu Tang deals and the Violator thing came a little later. But yeah, yeah but Violator was a big <laughs> time in hip hop. Definitely. History. I mean, that's a that's a staple in hip hop, right? You know, you got your yeah, uh, Busta those, Rhymes. You got a uh, who else was on there? I mean, Nori. Busta Everybody's Rhymes, talking yeah, about this shit. So that yeah, that was yeah. a big time in hip hop, and it also Power went moves. to a time that you can. I think Pharrell and them start jumping on about later time, right? That was all those more. Uh, 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 what would we call them? Like um, electric type beats type shit. You know, yeah. sounds and right, crazy right. ass shit. You feel me? Say, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very accurate identification of Pharrell sound. Well, let, well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me let me say this in two, about two seconds. Kareem Ali will begin to speak. Every point that you guys made is is actual, factual, and on point. I think in terms of impact, I think Wu Tang probably made a greater global impact, maybe because of the content and subject matter seemed to connect with more people. Uh, even mm -hmm. though it was intellectual, maybe a little less intellectual, a little less spiritual in that way to try. If we were comparing them straight up, um, I would have to go with Wu-Tang because you got nine members and all nine guys can rhyme. So I think the Wu probably could out-rhyme most of the guys of, of, of Tribe. You're only talking about, you know, Q-Tip and, um, you know, uh, the five-footer <laughs> in, in terms of that. But I, but I feel like from an album standpoint as a group, I feel like you have 36 chambers and Wu-Tang forever. But I don't know if I would say those are better than the Low End Theory or Midnight Marauders, um, Beat Tribes of Life. I think as a group, I thought Tribe was just better as a group. If you start breaking Wu-Tang members apart and you want to take every Wu-Tang album leading up from the, in the it 90s, the, the Supreme Clients. If you want to, if you want to count them, if you want to say that they're Wu-Tang albums and that's a group album, then maybe you would have an argument, but they're not the solo albums, in my opinion. Tribe albums with who Tribe would albums. Win if Tribe, if Tribe went against just Ghost and Ray, who would win? That's not even an easy answer. It's As, two on two. Fife and Q-Tip against Ghost and Ray. There's different styles. Rhyme of rhyme. Rhyme. And almost slightly different eras, too, because Tribe kind of began in the 80s, didn't it? No, but that's what, it's not even about eras, because Wu began, what, 90 anyway. Yeah. But we right. got to keep in mind, though, it was, and that's one of the things why I gave Tribe the edge is because them niggas chose to stand out in a world full of fucking gangsters. And I'm going to tell you, when I when I was in the streets or doing certain things in the streets, I came home and watched Cosby Show. That was more I wanted to, the streets. I, I didn't, yeah, we was praying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> peace, God. But, you know, we, um, you, you, you want things, like the gangsters was fucking with Tribe, too. Right. The easy route was to go the Wu Tang route, you know, the street appeal, and then throw some things in there, help your niggas learn and things of sort. But Trop stepped in a in a in an era where it was either if you if you think about from what eighty eight to oh four, I mean to ninety four ninety five, they came in during a battle era and against the era, right. and they literally bust through the middle of the scenes and told niggas, "Hey, let's have fucking fun." Me, myself, and I, all of that crazy ass. You know, like, 
that type of shit mattered. That's why they got so much love because the gangsters want to, every nigga want to put they, they gun down. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> niggas don't want to be, they don't want to be. And, and, and I would give extra got, that's a fact. I, I give more credit to Tribe for that. That's that's one of the reasons I would edge Tribe over Wu-Tang. I can't deny Wu-Tang's I global impact, a... but I would give Tribe the the, the nod. Global impact. Opinion. If we if we global impact, Fucking Wu Tang, man! Everybody was drawing Wu Tang signs on their notebook. Yeah. Global yeah. Impact, <laughs> that shit is fucking Wu Tang all day. Right. I think right. was really too mm-hmm. a really interesting thing that happened too is that during that early '90s period, like there was a certain portion of time where like the G era and the, and the West Coast gangster rap was dominating mainstream hip hop, and and then Wu Tang came in both a way sonically and conceptually where they was kind of the counter to that for the East Coast, where it was like, well, hold up, we hear what you're saying, but, you know, we're going to put our guns down, keep them right here, and we're going to open the book up. <laughs> like, we, we can we can, we can, can give you the nigga and we can give you the theory at the same time. And 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 it just kind of like was, a, was such a counter to that wave of the West Coast gangster rap, where it was like, well, here's the East Coast answer to that, and it's something completely different, and it's intellectual at the same time. And I think I always will have a bit of a Wu-Tang bias because that initial Wu-Tang wave hit me at such a at such a young age. I was in sixth grade when 36 Chambers came out. And so, like, not just me as an MC or an artist, but my entire trajectory of a human being was drastically altered by the existence of Wu-Tang Clan. It was like, I did not know that this was possible. Hmm. I want to be a rapping ninja, too. <laughs> Jeb, what are your final thoughts on on this? Do you, have you been swayed in any way with your Wu Tang? Nah, are you still gonna say try? I would, I would never debate anybody on who's greater between Wu Tang and Tribe because they. Then, that's what you're great. doing right now. You're, you're literally <laughs> on a debate no, show. No, no, debating. no. I'm, I'm still on the side of the side of the quest, but. Okay. You know, I appreciate Wu Tang's contribution. I would never downplay Wu Tang's contribution to the tribes. I mean, both of the groups they made they made great. You know, they did great things for the culture. You know what I mean? And I'm still though I still groove with Tribe Heavy. You know, I don't take nothing away from Wu Tang because I rock with them too. The ill Tai Hill, mm-hmm. do you have final thoughts on this? So you 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 you've, you've, you've selected Tribe. You hold firm on your position. It looks like he froze. Yeah. He's gone. No, he's back. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> he's returned. <laughs> he's returned. I thought it was me. <laughs> Bill said that. <laughs> yeah, so brother, I mean, do you, do you have any final thoughts on Wu Tang versus Tribe? The Ill Tai Hill, do you what do you what do you feel? Um, Karen, I think it's a dope that you do these uh topics, first of all, because I appreciate that. I'm going to listen to Wu Tang. Over tribe. If you if you put both of them in my what's the name in my hands, I'm probably right. gonna pop a Wu Tang tape in before I put a tribe tape in. But I was just being um I think more politically correct wise, wh- whatever the fuck you want, hip hopperly correct, right. whatever the fuck you want to call it. Because <laughs> <Hip-hopperly, laughs> like, tribe, <laughs> tribe contrib- contrib- contributed a lot to the game, like you know, and I. I, I they they did a lot. Like when you break off the things that they did, I mean Wu Tang, and I, I hear everybody on the five percent of stuff again and uh the intellectual part, but did we really get that at first? In '93, we we wasn't getting all of the uh I mean that was really like when we got the triumph, we really started getting the the peace god and the That's because we were teenagers by then. We were you know, yeah, we yeah, like, you know, like, like coming into consciousness a little bit different. Yeah, so you know, but back then, I mean everybody what Wu was doing, it wasn't like we wasn't seeing on a scale. Like, that kind of was everybody MO back then. I mean, big-ass groups. Everybody had a 10-fucking-man group. Like, you know, everybody had big-ass cliques and shit like that. That's why I be tripping when they be hating yeah. on these niggas because these young niggas is doing the exact same thing with these big-ass cliques. And everybody is, a, for instance, an ASAP, Ferg, ASAP, Rocky, ASAP. Biggie, I didn't, whoever they is, you feel me? All of these fables, <laughs> yeah, like, you feel me? <laughs> so, like, I'm not to take nothing from Wu. You know, Ghostface is one of my favorites. But Obviously, I think I, I think I fall from the Wu Tang when we talk group collaborative because I'm a fan of members of Wu Tang. 
not the entire group per se sometimes. Like, you know, Ghost, Neff, uh, Raekwon, uh, Liquid Swords was my first take ever in history. Um, fuck, I didn't even know who the fuck Golden Arms was probably till I was about fucking 13. Like, I, I didn't know who you God was. Oh, like, who the other fuck guy. is this? <laughs> who's this little white skin guy? Like, white skin, yeah. You know, and I'm not a big, like, RZA is one of my funniest rappers. Like, I like the uh, Bobby, 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 Digi, 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 sucking your ass like a Victoria's Secret wedgie. Like, that shit was, but I didn't want to hear it. Like, <laughs> so, I don't know, man. I'm still rocking with Tribe, man. We, we rocking with Tribe man. as far as uh, best group, I mean, best group out of those two, man. And I agree. I agree, but only by only by like a maybe a cunt hair, like one small pubic zirconium. <laughs> yeah, I had my fucking ODB out there been talking about I shit it on your lawn. That means you've been shit it on. I'm not the first dog. <laughs> shit it on your lawn. <laughs> Listen, the fact that we can quote these ridiculous things. Can we talk about how great of a how great of a live performer Q tip is though. By himself with oh, tribe doesn't matter. Forget about it. Forget about it. He's he one of the best, for sure. Even though I think Method Rock Man is roll. also a great live performer. Method Man and Ghost are pretty good. Yep. They were the best of that I saw. Yeah. So, some of the guys live were a little bit boring. But if it wasn't for the collective, I don't know. I want to turn away from Raekwon when I saw him live. You God, I, I didn't need it. Some of them were boring, just to be honest. Young Dirty Bastard, a beast, though. I thought he was his dad. He really channeled the spirit. He was really entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever listened to his interviews? Yeah. He's literally, his, literally. He's literally his father. But the crazy part is, um, I'm hoping that he's going to be able to get his father legacy out there more than what it is. As them dumb, like the dumbass quotable I just did. You know, um, mm. ODB yes. was a very pr prolific fucking person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He does it. He only gets the credit. I mean, the food stamp album cover and shit. He he only gets looked at as the I've I, I got ten baby mothers. He gets looked at the crazy as the crazy nigga. Right. But a lot of people don't realize genius. Yo was really genius level. He like, was like he my favorite member. He was my favorite member out of the woo. Yeah, he was and my he favorite also member. Was a fucking position player. That motherfucker mm -hmm. like. Yo knew it was Dennis Rodman. Yeah, it wasn't his turn. Exactly. I'm gonna just play right. position. What you need me to do? Take a charge? Got you. I'm gonna foul a nigga. Whatever you need me to do, I could do it. And he doesn't get the credit for that shit. A lot of shit right. that Meth got, as far as being the focal, Meth gotta come back and salute Wu Tang for that always because they allowed that. Because at least four of the members had that potential to be the focal. And they allowed yeah. Meth to kind of. And I only say about four. I'm going to say Raekwon, Ghostface. For years, y'all thought people was thinking Raekwon and Ghostface was the same person. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? To champion what you were saying. The album with three niggas on the cover. It was fucking confusing. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> the champion what you were saying. That's one of the reasons why Wu-Tang were so successful. Because everybody knew how to play their position. Wasn't nobody trying to become the star of the group. They already had it decided. Method Man is going to be the star of the group. We going to we going to we going to wait our turn, and like that's key, yo. That's key when you dealing with a lot a, a large group of individuals yeah. who all want the same thing. Everybody got to know how to play their position. Nobody the fact that Rizzo was able to get them to do that is just a testament to just how genius Rizzo's vision was that he was able to like get eight niggas with their own egos, their own styles, their own everything to, to buy into that collective mission. Like, How much did really, they buy into? Because they have a lot of issues. Don't they have a lot of issues? Don't RZA over Well, they had money? issues. <laughs> Naturally. Had, I, mean, I love it because they, they brothers. I right. mean, if you put four niggas in a room together, you feel me, that niggas gonna fight. You put 10 niggas in a room together, we yeah. definitely gonna yeah, fight. Gonna but rest. it's about um, being... As long as you got a bunch of niggas around you that's all okay with taking an ass whooping or winning a fight and there's nothing more. And that's what kind of, I think, create the brotherhood of it. But um, what, what y'all have listened, let's, I got a question for y'all. Oh, we love you, Rod King. That comes out. It does what it <laughs> yeah. does, right? That was first. And then Rizzo comes back to the hood like, hey, we're going to be these five percenters. So what y'all have listened right, right. to? Right? <laughs> I think, too, when you listen to them talk in the documentary, like a lot of it was, you know, you know, that Prince Rock King thing wasn't necessarily representative of what 
was coming out of their group, out of their dynamic group growing up and them, yeah. a lot of them knowing each other. <laughs> but what it was that got everybody on board was like, all right, I mean, that shit was kind of corny, but this nigga was on TV last week. Like, so he that would have been like something. I would have definitely been the, un, the, the the member left in the hood because I wasn't following no fucking friends. <laughs> <Prince Rock. laughs> I, I would have been a dumbass. I would have been mad as shit at home watching them blow up. Like, what the yes. fuck? Yes. And then, I mean, Riz, Riz's brother, Riz's older brother, who, you know, was really his, the key business guy behind right. the scenes with him, had a lot to do with it because they all knew him from being in the streets when they were the younger. Street dude. And it was like, all right, well, if he say this, there's something to this, then I guess, you know, we got to listen. I don't know what he's talking about. It's fucked up. We let Rizza change his whole image, but y'all still hating Bow Wow. <laughs> That's a whole nother episode. <laughs> no, right? That's the right to show Wu Tang versus Tribe. Poison Miley TV. Or not. <laughs> I'm trying to wrap it up, and you still talking about oh, Slants the goddamn. Wu Tang is forever. Wu Tang is for the children, <laughs> and the children are the future. <laughs> the W. Wu Tang and N <laughs> <laughs> All right, but are you serious? Wu Tang. This right, You want my shirt? You want my shirt? I had that I'm same a, shirt. I'm gonna purchase a Tribe Called <laughs> Quest shirt off of Amazon to show some support for the hip hoppery. <laughs> the hip hop. Yeah. So I have to stand here today as what I was when I was born a black man. <laughs> Your racism bounces off me, I'm bulletproof Your prejudice gets deflected, I'm bulletproof Your hatred can't penetrate me, I'm bulletproof Our minds can't be shackled no more, nah, we know the truth Yeah, from the spot that Malcolm stood